What's up guys, Dog Polk here, and today we're going to be breaking down this hand between Garrett and Robbie on the Hustler stream. This is simply the most insane hand I've ever seen. I have to think about that. I've seen a lot of pretty insane hands along the way, but it's definitely in the conversation for the most out of control hand of all time. We're going to break down what went down and talk about what might have happened, but before we do, I want to talk about the people involved in this hand, add a little context for you so you can understand the players a little bit better. All right, so this guy's name is Garrett. Apparently, he's pretty good at the pokers. The other player in the hand is Robbie Jade Lou. Now, I've done a little digging on her backstory and went through some of her stuff, including her Hendon mob. But take a look at the games that she's played over the last 10 years or so. It's primarily been a lot of small tournaments, a lot of very, very small tournaments, $100 tournaments, $250 tournaments, $400 tournaments, a couple thousand dollars here or there as we move into 2021. And then only this year, all of a sudden, she's playing a lot higher stakes. I'm seeing a 3K event, a 5K event, the 10K main event she played as well. She won a 2K, and then now she's playing on the Hustler live stream. The Hustler weekend big game stream is one of the largest cash game streams in the world. So we're looking at someone that has gone from playing in $400 tournaments in March of this year to playing in the one of the actual highest stakes possible streams for hundreds of thousands of dollars. I mean, a lot of players on that stream will buy in for up to 500, 600, 700, 800,000 dollars to start the stream off, and she's in there as well. This is quite a meteoric rise, and I'm not entirely sure this was disclosed on the Hustler show or not. There's a lot of information, and I'm trying to make this video quickly while going through all of the relevant information. But she's actually dating the player named Rip on the show. I have an inside source that has told me they've seen them. It, essentially talking together and in a romantic sense and also that he is backing her in a lot of these games that doesn't mean i know she's being backed by him in this game specifically however i can say that i know that she's been backed by him or given money by him to play in much smaller stakes games so i'd have to imagine there's something going on in this game as well this player whose name is jacob is apparently jake paul's manager or jake paul's boxing manager this is something that he's told to multiple different people so if Jake Paul's boxing manager is involved here, I think this must be a legitimate game. All right, I'm kidding, but we already have a little bit of a weird setup where we have two people dating in the same game and someone that's being put into much higher stakes games than they normally play. Before we talk about the hand and the session itself, I want to talk about a couple of streams that Robbie has played on prior at Hustler. So according to the site trackingpoker.com, she's played two sessions here before, one where she won $1,700 and one where she won just about 100000 the first session she played, she broke about even. She won very small. Her play seemed to be fairly reasonable. I looked at some of the big hands that she played, and frankly, they looked normal-ish. I didn't see anything that was too crazy. The second session had some kind of weird ones. So this one, she played it by herself without rip, but some of the big pots were a little bit weird. But before we jump into these hands, I want to just make one thing very clear. We don't know if what happened was above board or not, but what we should do is give our best to try and do an honest assessment and not jump to conclusions. So we're going to look at a lot of the big hands that happened and talk about what we think about them and if they make sense for someone that would be cheating or not. First big hand that happens on the stream is she four bets King Jack offsuit against Garrett's Queens. Probably not a play you'd want to make if you knew their cards. However, on the river, she does make a very nice bluff where she bets 12,000 into 12, roughly 12,000 and gets Garrett to fold because there's an ace out there on the board. This seems totally reasonable. She plays another big pot versus JR where she doubles up with top pair versus another top pair. Again, seemed like a totally reasonable hand. And then she gets a little bit deeper and so some bigger pots start developing. She plays another big hand, this time versus Charles, where she calls a pre-bot open in the biggest blind with Jack-8. Flops top pair, decides to bet the turn with second pair and a middling kicker slash straight draw. Charles decides to go ahead and raise with his ace king, just his gutter to the nuts. She does decide to make the call. And she rivers two pair with a one to the straight app out there and decides to call the river as well. This also seems totally fine. But one thing I'm starting to notice as a pattern in the way that Robbie plays is that she seems to play very, very slow in a way that's kind of unnatural. Like when players tend to tank, they, they tend to just sort of posture in a similar fashion and, and move. They don't tend to make a lot of different faces and move around and things. It seems a little bit theatrical to me, the way that she's tanking. And it doesn't seem like she's actually thinking about things. It seems like she's almost waiting. 
Uh, this is something that is reminiscent of some of the Mike Postle hands that we saw before where he would be waiting in order to, to know the information so that he could cheat other players at the table, allegedly. Um, and not to say she is doing that here, but I am seeing a trend of her tanking before she does stuff in a way that feels a little bit unnatural to me. Let me know in the comments below if you agree with that. Another hand from this stream that was a little weird. She decided to raise the river with a full house against three of a kind. Obviously, that's a good decision to make. That's not weird at all. But when called, she announced that she had two pair, which is kind of strange to me. Two pair. Oh, full house. That was not an angle. She just misread her hands. I think. Uh, typically speaking, poker players don't misunderstand when they have two pair versus a full house. So that strikes me as a little bit odd. The last hand that I thought was pretty weird from this session was a hand that she played against Bill Klein. Um, in this hand, she three bet with ace queen against ace eight suited. And then she checked a pretty dry flop. Uh, that's not you know too crazy, but it was a very nice play against Bill's hand, which was essentially ace eight of clubs for just a backdoor draw. And then there was a lot of posturing around as Bill bet some small sizes and she checked all twice. Now, you could argue she was just doing that to try and get him to bluff, which again is fine. Um, I would say overall on the stream, kind of weird, right? And the fact that she won $100,000 here playing in this sort of weird style is, you know, maybe a little bit notable, but n nothing too crazy here, nothing that can't be explained. I, I wouldn't say that there's anything here that I, I, I would find all too... Um, peculiar or maybe damning there were a couple other hands on the stream before the main event here but let's just go ahead and talk about the hand itself okay so this hand begins with the action folding around to garrett and opening up the eight seven of clubs i'm pretty sure this hand is straddled up to eight hundred dollars so for robbie it's 2.2k more to, to go and she looks down at the jack four offsuit now Jack four offsuit is not a hand that you're going to want to defend versus almost a four X here. That said, people could defend it. It's not crazy to defend it, but she does go ahead and make the call. The flop comes 10, 10, nine with two clubs and Garrett sides to bet 2.5 K into 6.7. So right, roughly 35, 40% pot bet. Now in Robbie's shoes with Jack four, Jack of clubs, uh, this hand could really go in a lot of directions. I think just letting it go is fine. I think uh, floating here can also be fine. Raising here can also be fine. It's a classic poker hands situation, but she does go ahead and make the call. And let's take a look at the turn. The turn comes the three of hearts. Now there are two flush draws out there and Garrett decides to barrel once again. This time he goes for a big size. I like to bet most of the pot with a 10K bet here with his open and straight flush draw. At this point in Robbie's shoes, there's just... There's just simply no way around it. It's hard to imagine almost anyone continuing here at all. Um, you can get barreled. You have no equity versus any of the value bets. You're actually behind a bunch of draws. So hands like king jack, queen jack, king queen, uh, they're all those are all crushing you. And then if your pawn does have a hand like for example eight seven suited here, uh, you're looking at almost a pure flip. Uh, I'm not sure what the equity would be. This this factors in dead cards. I know it says 5347, but the, the the equity without knowing dead cards, I don't I don't think would be like that. Regardless, she does decide to go ahead and min raise, and this is a truly wild play. We're not into it has to be cheating territory here, but this is a very 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 aggressive min raise. Maybe you don't want to get pushed around. Maybe you're trying to fight back. They've played a bunch of big hands together. Even still, I could see this being a reasonable play. I, I'll also note for the strategy nerds, this is probably not a good hand to do this with because you actually want your opponent to have cards like the Jack of Clubs or the Four of Clubs. When you have these cards, it's less likely that they're bluffing. But I don't want to get us bogged down in too much strategy. In fact, if you want to learn some strategy, head on over to Upswing Poker on October 17th. We're launching Nick Fratrangelo's Live Poker Course. That's right, Smash Live Cash coming to you on October 17th over on Upswing Poker. Anyway, now that I've got my shameless plugging out of the way, back to the hand. What I can say when I see something like this, I actually vividly remember when I played against the guy that was cheating me, him doing lots of min raising me in weird spots, and he would even do it with hands like we actually played a, a big pot where I had a straight flush draw and uh, I got called by uh, like Jack Deuce offsuit. And uh, it's showing down on me thinking to myself, I 100% know I'm getting cheated. 
and I reported the guy and they confirmed it and I got my money back because PokerStars said this guy was cheating you. Long story, don't have to get into that. So this is a weird play, but still possible. What happens next is just truly, truly incredible. Okay. So Garrett jams, which by the way, probably a little bit big to jam here. He's risking another 109K. Uh, I think you're probably supposed to either three bet smaller call, but whatever. Decides to jam. And Robbie ends up making the call with Jack four. Now, this is crazy because yes, you beat eight, seven of clubs. And maybe you beat a hand like eight, six of clubs or seven, six of clubs. But even other flush draws, like for example, if Garrett had king, queen of clubs, you are so dead uh, in those situations. So, and then Lord forbid Garrett has a 10, some kind of value bet. This is simply not a thing. This call is not a thing. This is calling off $109,000 with nothing where you could potentially lose other draws but what's her logic for why she does it i thought you were on ace high ace high uh-huh and then so why call with jack eye then I, first of all a little bit of a straight draw but i have block or something no no no, no on the turn though i ran it twice because i didn't think jack high could like, be good oh. do you get what i'm saying no i had a blocker I don't, I don't with a jack do okay you understand what you're probably saying you had a blocker but here's the thing though yeah. if you want if you want well no, please explain. Give me a second. It's not about what, what I have. It's, what I was like. it's about what I don't think you have when you play against me. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Those, those are words. There's a, a, just a lot of the words just in all kinds of places. She keeps talking about having the jack of clubs, but then can't really in any way decipher why that changes this at all, which is very strange to me. Why is she even bringing it up if she doesn't realize its implications? And she throws out a lot of poker terms, but I don't think she really knows how they're used or what they mean talking about flush draws or backdoor flush draws or backdoor straight draws or how that card is relevant or she can't even really seem to put Garrett on a range of hands it, it it's really unclear to me what she means at almost any point here but one thing is definitely for sure her story seems to change a lot and then when the turn came it was a three and you will hear me say on stream are threes any good threes no good and the reason I said that is because I thought I was holding a jack of clubs and a three of whatever. The misread her hand thing is definitely a lie because she checks her cards here before she makes the call. That's right. This is an image of her checking her cards before she calls. So she did not misread her hand. Also, in the conversation right following the hand, she comments in a way where she knows she doesn't have a three. She says, I have a pure bluff catcher. When someone asks if she has a three. So she did not misread her hand here. I don't know why she's making up stories. There's a lot of plausible reasons why she's doing it. Regardless, she knew her hand. Anyway, following this, Robbie and Garrett decide to talk off stream where they make the decision that she would give all of Garrett's money back to Garrett. In a hand where Garrett could have easily just hit a pair or a flush or a straight. I mean, this call, it wasn't like she had him killed. He had tons of outs. It was, it was basically a flip. In fact... According to the dead cards, he was actually ahead in chance to win. Guys, I got to say, I've recorded and re-recorded this last segment a bunch of times, and I've talked with a lot of people, and I feel torn because on one hand, when I see a hand like this, it's just so insane that we have to acknowledge the chance that there's something going on. However, this girl also seems very very dumb and clearly can't describe a poker hand and a strategy and what's happening so does that make it more likely she would do something like this probably it's still an insane hand the fact she can't even explain the strategy part of it 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 doesn't help the fact she paid it back feels extremely damning but maybe she just felt like she was pressured and she doesn't really understand what's going on. And my heart really feels like something is up, but I'm trying to be objective about this. And it's only been a few sessions. 
even though she is up in all of those sessions and she's won a lot of money here and this hand is crazy, it's not enough for us to have a real solid idea that she is. So my main takeaway here would be this. When you see stuff like this, be wary, be skeptical, and do your best to always be questioning what's going on in situations because that's what you should be doing as a poker player. You should be making sure you're not in bad spots. However, I do not think this is enough at this point to say that she's cheating. It's certainly possible. More information will likely come out. I know it would be great if I could just go all in on one or the other guys, but frankly, I think this is a tough spot. Let me know what you think in the comments below. One last thing before we go, just to talk about Garrett for a second. I know he's, I know he's taking a lot of heat for the way he's handled himself tonight, but I just want to say one thing. When you get cheated or you think you got cheated or something you think is messed up happens, it's very hard to think clearly. And so quite clearly in this situation, it's going to be difficult for Garrett to think truly objectively when his hand goes down. He's either, he's either been cheated or he's on one of the most all-time sick, bad beat hero calls I've ever seen in my life. It's going to be hard to think clearly. I think he did the right thing by leaving the stream. I don't know if it was the right thing to take the money or not. I really don't know. But what I can say is I'm sure Garrett will do the right thing in the long run. He's always seemed like a stand-up good guy. I think people should just realize that when you have something like this happen to you, it's going to be difficult to think super clearly. And I think he did the right thing by removing himself from the situation. I know it's a bit weird to break up the video like this, but I was recording that video until late last night into the wee hours of the morning. And now that I've woken up, had a chance to think about things, I want to clear up a couple of points and make a couple of new ones. For starters, since this incident, both players have made public statements with Garrett posting a six page document on Twitter. You can read it if you want to and go through exactly what he was thinking. And also Robbie posting her thoughts as well. Garrett's tweets essentially explained why he believed that he was cheated, that Hustler production was in no way involved in the cheating, and that she decided to give the money back to him when Ryan Feldman made it clear this was going to be a very big deal. Garrett also said if there was any chance that he was not cheated, he would not accept the money, meaning Garrett feels 100% that this was not on the up and up and he was cheated in the hand. Robbie's tweet about the subject told a different tale that essentially he cornered her and threatened her, essentially implying to give the money back to him. Full details still to come. All right, let's go big picture and take a step back. First questions first. Do we think Robbie was cheating this game or not? I have friends on both sides that have said fairly strongly one way or the other. However, when I look at this hand, it is so ridiculous that I simply have to think that the most likely outcome is this is cheating. Look at this hand again, guys. Look at this hand again. Bet 10K, raise 20K, jam 130K, call. I'm sorry. I know we all want to believe that someone just LOL stumbled into this. But look at the absurdity of this hand. This is the most absurd hand I've seen ever. And on top of it, it reminds me, I'm having flashbacks to when I got cheated. I got min raised a lot in places because... When someone knows they're ahead or behind, they can, or when someone knows they're ahead, they can min raise to put you in very tough spots where you have to continue with the worst hand. And then also to call the jam. It just simply is not a hand that happens. I want to address all of the comments. Well, why would she wait for this spot? Why would she? For starters, we have to look at the action more than the reasoning. And the logic is simple. How often do we see someone get caught cheating and we say, oh, wow, cheaters are idiots. I can't believe they did that. Right? We see that all the time. Postle was incredibly blatant. Think about people that commit crimes in real life. We see so many cases where the perpetrator just does something super obvious and we think, what an idiot, right? People can make really bad mistakes in how they cover up their crime. So the first and most important thing is what is the evidence? And then the second thing is what is the reasoning? Now, I do understand the logic. They, they are very close in equity in this hand. So why pick the spot? I don't think it's necessarily like that. There's a couple ways of cheating where that wouldn't really come into play here. First off, there's a form where you know what cards are going to be placed on later streets. So it's possible if they are cheating here that she knows the runouts and that she will win. That's one way that people do this. The second is that she can simply get notification if she's good or not good. So if she's good, it's a certain number of, of some kind of signal or, or device, whatever it would be. If she's not good, it's a different one. In that scenario, she doesn't know that she's still a flip here. 
And by the way, the equity should be a little bit closer, but there are dead cards, which is why it's counting that out. Regardless, she just knows she's ahead, right? Or the person that is signaling her, they don't know the equities either. They just know that she is ahead. So this argument, why would she wait for this spot? I don't think it's necessarily like that. I think she got a huge spot. And then if she was cheating, was notified she's ahead and thus makes the call. The argument that she just stumbled into this, and when we look at this hand, for starters, you simply cannot believe anything she's saying. Her story changes a bunch of times. She said she didn't, she misread her hand. She looked at it before she called. The conversation right after the hand, she clearly knew what was going on. And there was a very weird comment that someone pointed out to me that she made right after the call when she was playing Garrett. And she said, essentially, that she was owning him post-stream as well. You let me do this to you post-stream, too, last time we played. I'm yeah. like, you going to keep letting me... What does that mean exactly? Why would post stream be matter? Is she implying that that the game's on the up and up because she won in a different game too? Because if so, it's like she's defending herself against an accusation that hasn't been levied yet. The next question is, what person wins a 270k pot, or really any pot for that matter, and then gives back the money to the player that they beat afterwards? when they won the hand fair and square. I, I I really can't think of examples of that. Maybe there are specific examples where the person that lost the pot misunderstood the action or misread their hand or something like that. Maybe that's that's something that could happen. Um, that actually happened on the lodge the other day. But regardless, what person wins a pot of this size, $270,000 pot, and then gives the money back afterwards? Doesn't make sense to me. If she won this pot fair and square, she would just say, fuck you. I'm keeping the money. I won this. I made a mistake, but you got caught, whatever. I don't really believe that someone, because they're flustered and intimidated, are are going to give up $135,000. Guys, think about that sentence. She was playing $400 tournaments mostly, $300 tournaments in the last few years. And now she's giving up $130,000 because she feels bad somebody lost this just does not make sense so it's not impossible that she felt pressured and that's why she gave it back but i strongly believe what is more likely is when you get caught in something like this it's much better to try and make it go away and if you feel like paying the money back makes it go away then you're more likely to do that because it protects you in the future again we're using some conjecture here but that seems much more likely to me than she felt bad about winning this pot fairly and gave him his money back. The final point I want to make is that I think that this is actually good for the community to be talking about this as long as we talk about it using the right terms and talk about it fairly. There are a lot of scumbags in poker. We've all seen the stories. We've all seen people steal money. We've seen people cheat. We've seen so many things. I think the community having an approach where we debate these things is very good. However, one thing that has become overwhelmingly clear about this story, everyone on the internet has a hardline stance, yes or no. Either she did it or she didn't do it. And I see these comments back and forth, and it, it, it's almost like a microcosm of society as a whole right now. It has to be white or black. It has to be left or right. It has to be this or that. When the reality is that people do not know here. This is not a Mike Paul situation where everyone knows that they cheated. This is a situation where... It does seem very likely. However, it's one hand. And so we need to analyze it and talk about it with an approach that's, okay, it is quite likely she cheated here, but it's also at least plausible she did not. We need to go through this fairly and not just jump on one side of the bandwagon. The people that think that there's nothing sketchy here at all, this is just like when a fish plays poker, oh, they got lucky. You guys are idiots. In fact, Please tell me what games you're in because I think every other person in the entire world would love to come play in your game where this hand isn't that notable. This is an insane hand. This is a crazy, crazy hand. And then the people on the, she's for sure 100% guilty. While I lean that direction, it is one hand and she has played a lot of, a lot of weird hands over the course of, of these last three streams. So it's not like this is the, she's it's impossible that she, you know, decided to make this call. What is definitely impossible is she did not tell a story that is correct. She certainly rechecked her cards. She knew after the hand pretty almost immediately she did not have a three. Her her story around the story are, are definitely 
at least mistruths, if not lies. But it's also possible that she's just not capable of continuing to tell a continuous story accurately. Um, there has been a lot of, I saw the word word salad about the way she describes these hands. And frankly, listening to her talk about the reason she called when talking to Garrett is just, it's just brutal. It's absolutely just brutal. Anyway, regardless, while I lean towards the side that I think she likely cheated, I also don't know, and I want to see more evidence, and I want to see people discuss this. So I guess my, my in summary concluding point here would be, I think it's good to have discussion. I think it's good for us to analyze things. I think we should deep dive this. Lord knows Joey's probably done his 14th 10-hour stream by now. But we should also have a little bit of room for maybe we're wrong and be open to interpreting new information that might make us change our mind. Okay, I feel like that was a little bit more of the summary I wanted to make last night when I was belligerently tired. I will see you guys later. Peace. That's going to be it from me, guys. I hope that was objective enough. Uh, I'm sure there are people on each side that think that it wasn't, but uh, really just trying to do my best analysis here to bring you guys a breakdown of what happened. Hope you enjoyed it. Slap a thumbs up on this video. I'll see you again soon.